What's going on everyone? Steven here, back with another Cuphead tutorial. This is episode 6. Today I'm going to discuss using the Mono Dissector in Cheat Engine. In the last episode I showed you how you could activate Mono features so that you could look at the symbol names of methods um, with the subroutines that you're in so that you can try to find meaning with, you know, whatever you're looking for based on some values you found from scanning. Today we're not going to worry about scanning. We're just going to jump straight into using the mono dissector and see what we can find from there. So the first thing you want to do is open the Cuphead process with Cheat Engine. After that, this mono thing popped up here in the menu bar. Click mono. Click dissect mono. All right, And in this window that pops up, you should see a hexadecimal value here. Click the arrow next to it. And depending on the game you're doing this with, you may have a ton of stuff pop up here. Um, the main one that you will use the majority of the time, or that you'll be interested in digging in, rather, is assembly-c-sharp. So click the arrow next to that. Oop, there we go. Um, and now just look through here and look for names that mean things to you, whether that's based on your knowledge of the game or gaming terminology in general, like jumping or money, coins, whatever, all right? Um, so I am in the tutorial level here, and because Cuphead, the devs were very specific with things that they named, it, it makes this game a perfect example to use for this. So because I've dug around in this a little bit already, I'm going to go down to where it says tutorial level, uh, tutorial level, okay. So we have a bunch of different things here, one of which is tutorial level Perry next. Now because I've dug around in here, I had an idea of what that would do, which is why I settled on this one. Whenever you parry on these dots here, it makes the next subsequent one light up. And you can parry on those, right? So, um, I thought maybe this had something to do with that. So, just assuming that we want to futz with that, click the arrow down here. All right, and where it says methods here, click the arrow next to that. And look at your method names. We see an interesting one here. Set next parry. What does that do? Could that be after you hit one of these, it sets the next one? That's, uh, you know, let's find out. <laughs> uh, so I'm sort of thinking aloud. This is what I'm thinking as I'm looking at this stuff. You know, ask yourself these questions, test it out. So, you know, now what you'll do is you'll right click here and say JIT. And JIT is going to open up the disassembler here and take you to where this is. All right. Um, so whenever you're in the tutorial level, you know, execution will flow through this point here, through here. All right. And so the first thing I want to try to do is something I like doing that I mentioned in the other video, which is um, using RET here. And what you can do is go select current function and look, go to the bottom of your function and see what kind of ret they have there, <clears throat> what kind of return. If you see one there, you can use that same one pretty much, um, not necessarily, but there are other types of rets. You can do a ret8, but I'm not going to worry about diving into all that yet. Uh, if you're interested, look up calling conventions and cleaning up the stack. That's a couple of good terms for you to research. All right, so what I'm going to do is just, you can either, well, I'm going to copy this. I like to copy this because I'll usually go back and put it back when I'm futzing with uh, methods and calls and all that stuff. All right, so you can either say red or you can go db c3. C3 is the byte for return, so I'll just do that. Okay, um, and now let's see what happens whenever we parry on this dot. It did not go to the next one. All right, and even better yet, we can just sit here and keep parrying on this one dot <laughs> and nothing happens. If you press it fast enough, you can do that. 
So that's interesting because it lets you know that there's a value that's resetting for you that you can re-parry. You can slap that pink whatever again, the dot, right? So maybe that clues you in on some other stuff you want to do with maybe jumping or whatever. Anyway, so I'm going to go back and set this to what it was. Okay, now let's see what happens. Back to normal. Okay, so that's that's that. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to exit out of this, back to map. And we're going to look for the shop here. And like I said, this game is just a primo example for this because of the way they've named everything, just meticulously. It's kudos to the devs because <laughs> they did a great job making things meaningful with how they named it. Okay, Shop scene, shop scene, buy animation, buy coin, shop scene, pig. Well, when you go into the shop, let's go into the shop and see what we see here. Welcome. All right, so the pig said welcome. Now he's chilling. Watch him. Let's watch him for a second. Um, a little more than a second. And you'll see that anytime now he should look at a stopwatch. Or pocket watch, rather. There it is. Okay. So, just take in what all's going on. We came into the shop. There was an animation that played. He said welcome. He's sitting there like that. He looks at his watch. Let's exit out of the shop. Goodbye. Goodbye. Animation, including, you know, a sound that plays. And bam, we're back outside, right? Okay. Here, shop scene pig. Let's drill down into that. Let's look at the methods. Look at these names. On start, on exit, on purchase. So if we had purchased something, I already bought everything, so we didn't see anything related to that. And then on idle loop. Okay. So my thinking originally was on start. Whenever we walk into it, he says welcome. Maybe that's what that is. When we leave, the on exit is goodbye. On purchase is an animation when you purchase. On idle loop is when he's standing there and he's just like breathing and moving. And then he eventually looks at his watch, right? All right, well, now this is another thing that you can look at, fields. So fields tend to be offsets um, that hold interesting values related to methods, you know. So look at this, idle loops, idle loops max. Now, which one of these methods do you think those offsets have to do with? On idle loop, right? All right, so let's go into the shop again. Okay. Um, so actually, before we do that, let me exit back out. And what I'm going to do is the one that says on start here, I'm going to JIT that. All right. And once again, I'm going to do my RAT here. Let's go inside and see what happens. He didn't say welcome. Now he's just sitting there doing his thing, right? So that got rid of that. All right, and this is a very short method right here, everything that goes on. This would be an easy one to reverse engineer. On start, what does he do? He says welcome, he animates, right? Well, what do we see? Some things that you, you don't know, whatever. It's setting up a call here. Audio manager play. Okay, this is pushing things. Uh, the location of the sound it wants to play probably onto the stack and calling audio manager play playing the welcome right uh, and then we see this name abstract mono behavior get animator what do you think that's doing setting something up for whenever he says welcome and he does you know the animation happens really simple bam you're back out of you know this method so yeah that's cool all right, well, now let's look at the on idle loop. Let's jit that. Okay. Now we see um, offsets 2.8 and 2C, right? Idle loops max is probably the max number of times that this animation right here will loop, 
see how it just looks to be repeating the same thing like one two three four five six right and then after it does that so many times you know it says okay now play the animation where he looks at the watch right so this offset is that your number of loops that are being counted up and then when it hits the max number then it plays the animation perhaps right so what we did is we jitted on idle loop and that's where we are now now start looking through over here look for these offsets this is one thing I like to do this isn't the only way to use this by the way this is just one of the ways I like to go through and use it do we see offset 28 or 2c over here anywhere here's 2c here's 2c here's 28 okay what do we have going on here uh, you can't really see see that red and the blue. I know you can't see that well on video, so I'm actually looking at the instruction above, this move, EAX, whatever. All right, so right here, we see EDI plus 2C. 2C is idle loops, okay? That value is being moved into EAX. Then EAX right here, right? It's being incremented by one, okay? then that value is put back into the same memory address that it was taken from. So that's incrementing our uh, loops, our loop count, rather. Okay. Then here at the 2.8, right, EDI plus 2.8, what's 2.8? Idle loops max. That's being moved into ECX. And then what do we have here? A compare. What's it doing? It's comparing EAX to ECX. It's comparing in EAX, that's where our loop counts are now, or our loop count, rather, where it is now, comparing it to max, okay? And if the value or the result is, you know, it's less than, it's going to jump over this entire section of code, right? So what can we try to do here? Um, let's make this compare ECX to itself, all right, which is going to compare uh, idle loops max to itself. So it'll think, okay, you've reached the max number of loops, so what happens if we do that? Let's just change this to compare ECX to ECX. All right, see what he's doing with every tick or every loop whatever it's playing the watch look animation because it thinks we have hit that max value every time All right so let's put EAX back see what happens there we go it's back to normal all right so yeah there's a ton of stuff by all means get this game I know 20 bucks is a bit steep but this is hand-drawn animation. The music is amazing. The game is really fun. It's challenging. But even more than that, if you're interested in game hacking, even if you're new to it, this is a really great game for learning on and using all this stuff, especially mono, because there's so much stuff here that you can futz with. Break the game. Have fun. Crash it. You're going to crash the game. <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, this can be a great way that instead of trying to start scanning for values, you can just jump straight into here and try to find stuff. So anyway, I hope that you found this video fun and educational and entertaining. Yeah, check out the other videos in the series if you haven't yet. And uh, I'm going to try to come up with some more stuff to hack with Cuphead. There's a ton of things. And it's a fun game. So give me a like if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will talk to you all in the next one. Take care.